Okay, everybody, I'm going to show you guys how to create a virtual machine. So this should be a review for most of the students in my classes because we've done this several times. But I want to make sure that everybody can have a video where I demonstrate how to create a sandbox that we can use for our various classes while we're currently in social isolation because of the COVID virus. So I've opened up my VMware workstation. This is available as free software that you can download from your SATE account. You should have instructions on that. Um, you can also get VMware through the VMware website, but uh, I've got the pro version on a trial license, um, so you can use that. Or if they're a player, I think you can make machines as well. So I'm going to create a new virtual machine. It's going to ask me what type of configuration do I want. With a typical configuration, depending on the operating system I choose, it's going to choose uh, settings for that. I want to do a custom configuration because I want to adjust the amount of RAM and I want to adjust my disk space size. One of the things that I'll say is that at home, if you're going to be using a sandbox, you want to have a machine with at least uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM because I'm going to have a minimum of 8 gigabytes dedicated to a Windows server running SQL Server. My machine here has 32 gigabytes of RAM. So in this demonstration, I'll be creating a machine that has 16 gigabytes of virtual RAM. I'll go next. Now it'll say what compatibility do I want? Now in this demonstration, I'm not going to go through each box and explain it. I'm just building a sandbox. So I'm going to shortcut a lot of stuff and just click next. So in this case here, there's uh, nothing I'm going to talk about. I'll click next. It does ask where the installer disk is. So it is important to be able to know where you're storing your files. In my case, I have a folder where I've downloaded the ISO files. It's called the source ISO files. And you can see here, I have Windows SQL Server 2016, which cannot be installed as a raw machine. It's installed after the server, Windows 10 and Windows Server. So the first thing I need to do is install Windows Server. So I point to the ISO with the Windows Server. <clears throat> when I click Next, it detected that this was Windows Server 2016. It's going to ask me to put in a license key. At this point, I will skip using the license key and work with a trial version. It'll ask me if I want to create a user account. It automatically picks up my first name. I can put in a password. In my case, I tend to use the same password for all my sandboxes because I delete them. And this way, I don't run into a problem forgetting what that password is. I'm going to say next. And I didn't enter a key. I know that. What do I want to call it? I'm going to call this demo Windows Server 2016. It's going to ask me where I wish to store that machine. By default, it's going to go to the directory that I have for virtual machines, which is D documents, but I don't want that. I want to go in. I'm going to put it onto my D drive just because I have more space on my D drive than my C drive. And I'm going to create a new folder called demo VM video just so I know where it is and I can delete it when I'm done. So I'll put that new folder in there and that's where I'll store my virtual machine. Again, I'm just going to go next on some of these screens. Uh, in terms of memory, like I mentioned, I have a total of 32 gigs on this machine. So the maximum I can have is about 27 gigs, but I'm going to bring that up to 16 gigs. This will make for a very nice, fast environment for when I have this booted. I'll go in here, again, taking the defaults, taking the default, taking the defaults. I'm going to create a new virtual hard disk. If you've taken a disk from me, if I've given you a file that has a VHD, um, then you can say use an existing virtual disk, and you'll point to wherever you've saved that file on your system. Do not try to drive it from an external drive. Better to copy it onto an internal, internal hard drive and then use it off of that. But in my case, I'm going to create a new one. Say next. I'm going to make that 120 gigs in size. And I can allocate the disk space now to make it a little bit faster. Or what I can do is I can just allow it to allocate space as I install programs and features. I also have the choice of storing it as a single file or splitting it into multiple files. My hard drive on my personal computer here is running NTFS file system, so I can store it as a single large file, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it the same name, and now I've got it, and it's going to go in, it's going to connect to that ISO, it's going to boot the system and begin the process of installing Windows. 
It's asking me about some removable devices for my host machine. I'm just going to say OK to that. And the process of installation begins. I'm going to pause the video while it completes some of the setups. So I'm just pausing every so often. It won't quite go this quickly when you're actually installing it. You'll have to wait between some of these screens. It'll copy the files over. And it depends. If you have a solid state hard drive, this can actually go quite quickly. Okay, so now I have the basic Windows Server 2016 set up. You'll notice that the um, screen doesn't take up a lot of real estate because I want to make sure that I have VMware tools installed, which automatically will kick off. If for some reason that didn't kick off, what I could do is go into my menu and you can go into uh, install VMware tools. Right now it's in the middle of doing it. So that'll improve my screen as well. Okay, so here we go. I've got the uh, system there. It's installed VMware tools. I've got the setup. It wants me to restart because of the configuration. Um, I'll say yes to that. Off we go. It'll restart the virtual machine. Okay, so I've got the machine here and it's rebooted. I'm going to go into the VM here and I can send a control alt delete. Notice that it wants to use the account um, that it created for me under my first name. I actually, this is very important. I want to go in as administrator and you have to put a password in. So here I'll go in and put a password in for the administrator account. By default, when you set it up automatically, it puts in a blank password. There's no password set. It's very important that you go in and create that password because otherwise certain things may not install properly and certain services may not run. So I'll go in, I sign in as the administrator. That other account just acts as a backdoor administrator now. And I have a virtual machine. Now the speed of this virtual machine is going to be fairly quick on my system uh, because of the processor that I have, as well as the fact that I've allocated 16 gigs of RAM for the machine. It doesn't really matter if it's super fast or slow on yours. Obviously the more RAM you can dedicate to it, the better. But if your base system only has 16 gigs of RAM, I wouldn't go much more than 8 gigs of RAM on the virtual machine. And uh, obviously, more, more RAM, more better. So we'll close this down. Um, so now I want to install my uh, SQL Server. So in order to install the SQL Server, I need to insert the SQL Server CD-ROM. To do that, if I go into my VM and go into my removable devices, I'm going to go into my CD-ROM. I'm going to go to my settings of my CD-ROM. Underneath the settings, I need to first of all connect it so that now it thinks that there's a CD-ROM connected to it. And then I need to point it to the appropriate ISO image. Once again, I have both my Windows and my SQL Server ISOs in the same folder. So now it thinks that I've just inserted the SQL Server CD-ROM. Whenever you insert a new CD-ROM, it says, hey, what do you want to happen when I do this? And I want to run setup. I could also navigate through the file system, and I could go to my D drive, which is the CD-ROM drive, and underneath the CD-ROM drive, I could navigate and run setup from there as well. So I'm running setup, and this is now my SQL Server setup. I want to go into installation. I'm going to install a new standalone installation of SQL Server. Then I'll come back and install SQL Server uh, Management Studio. Then I'll come back and install SQL Server Data Tools. I'm going to use the developer edition. I'm going to accept the license agreement. Once again, I'm going to go in here. I can use Windows Update to check for updates. Um, I'm going to go through and just click through some of this, um, but you can read up on that if, as you want. I'm just creating a sandbox, so I'm spending a little bit of uh, less time going into each and every option. I'm just basically clicking through some next, next, next type steps. Okay, you'll notice that the firewall gives me a warning. That's fine. I don't care about that. So I'll hit next. Obviously, a critical error would be a problem, but you shouldn't encounter any of those if you have just a plain generic install like the one I've done. So I'll click next. Now, I don't need everything. 
I just need those things that I'm going to work with. So I need the database engine. On this particular machine, I might want to put replication in there so I can practice that. I may want to practice my data quality services. Uh, if I go down, I might want to do some analysis services. Each instance can only have one type of analysis services, either uh, multidimensional or tabular or pivot table. I'm going to use uh, tabular in this one. Don't need to put in R and such. I do want to maybe put in reporting services, but not the SharePoint version. I just want to go in and have regular reporting services in there, so I'm not going to choose the SharePoint. Um, data quality client I can put in there, connectivity, uh, integration services. So again, you can kind of choose what you want to put in here around um, the features and such. The temptation is to collect, connect, uh, sorry, click everything, but you don't necessarily need to do that. So for example, with reporting uh, uh, services, unless I'm using the SharePoint plugins, I don't need to select that. I can install that separately. Uh, if I need to later on, you can always come back if you want to learn something else. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to install those few features. And this will kick off the installation where it says, okay, what instance do you want to have? I'm going to give it the default instance, which is SQL Server. Notice underneath here that it says, you know, if there's multiple instances, I'll see them in there. So I might want to reinstall and do a second instance, maybe one with tabular, maybe one with analytical. So I'll go in here, take the default instance. And then underneath here, you'll notice that these are set to automatic. You'll notice that the browser is set to disabled. I'll set that to automatic. And underneath manual, I'll set that to automatic as well. Just so that the SQL Server agent and the SQL Server browser both start up uh, automatically. I can even grant the perform volume maintenance to this. Go next. Now, underneath here, you'll notice I have Windows authentication mode, which is the default. I want mixed mode. This means that I will have both Windows authentication and individual SQL Server logins that can log into this system. This is especially important um, when we're using things like the Galactic Delivery Services and the Reporting Services course or the final project we're using Maximum Miniatures. We have to create SQL accounts and that will not work unless we're in mixed mode. I also have to add the current user to be the SQL Server Administrator. Remember that I logged in as Administrator. So I click Add Current User. It takes a few moments, but you'll see that local user account, the administrator account, pop in there. And now I say Next. I'm going to use Tabular Mode, and I'm going to add the current user as being the administrator for this. Very important to choose your mode and click the Add Current User. Click Next. says this is what you'd like to install, and then that kicks off the installation process. It takes a little while to do that, and I'll just pause the video while it installs a whole bunch of things. Okay, so you can see that the installation succeeded. I'll scroll down. No warnings in there. I'll close that. So now I want to do some more things. I want to install the SQL Server Management Tools. This will actually launch a website which will allow me to download the tools. So before I do that, You'll notice that the only browser available right now on Windows Server 2016 by default is Internet Explorer. On Windows Server, it actually ends up having a number of security settings. So I'm going to say don't use the security settings. But what I am going to do is I'm actually going to download a different browser. I'll just download Firefox because I'm going to get prompted for an awful lot of security things. So I'm going to add, add, close. You'll see me doing this quite a lot. Add, add, close. Um, and the idea behind this is that I want to download a browser that doesn't have quite as many restrictions on it from a security standpoint. I could also go in if I wanted to. I'll just grab Opera then. That's fine. Um, doesn't matter which one I have. Just a different browser is what I'm looking for. I saw Firefox below there, but here we go. Opera it is. A lot of these are just redirects, but I'm not going to read every one of them. I'm just going to get through all the security stuff by allowing it to happen. This is a sandbox, so I'm not terribly concerned about the security that I have here. I just want to 
I just want to use a different browser that doesn't make me do this the whole time. Okay, doesn't like me. Fine, we'll just go back. I know Firefox works well, so. A lot of times you have to hit the, there we go. So there's the download happening. You can view the download, run it. Okay, so now I have Firefox here. I'm not going to bother with any of this stuff here. But what I will do is close that. And now, close this here. Now I'll go in, double-click Firefox. It's going to prompt me to use it as its, as the default browser. So I'm going to go in here underneath uh, Browser. I'm going to go in, choose Firefox as my default browser. And Firefox is in play. So I'm going to go in, install the management tools. You'll notice that it kicks it off into Firefox because that's my default browser now. I'm going to download the latest SSMS, right? It's version 18.4. So I'm going to grab SSMS, and I'm not being prompted for that add, add, continue type thing anymore. I can just do the download and install. Okay, so we'll go in. I always like to right click and say run as administrator just to make sure that I don't wind up with any security issues when I'm trying to install. I'm going to install SQL Server Management Studio and now I'll have that available to me. One of the things I also like to do once I install SQL Server Management Studio is to go in and pin it to the taskbar as well. Okay, so it wants to do a restart in order to complete the setup. What I can do is uh, close this for now because I'm going to install something else that also requires a restart. So I'm now going to go in and inst install the SQL Server Data Tools. Once again, punches me out to a website. Now, in my case, I want the standalone installer. So I don't have Visual Studio in there. So what I'll do is I'll grab the standalone installer for 2017. And if I go in here, it'll give me information, da 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 da. But I'm going to do English. I'm going to save that file brings me the download, go into here, right click, run as administrator, and now we're doing the SQL Server data tool standalone installer. I'm going to do analysis services, reporting, and integration services. Install that, and we'll install SQL Server data tools. Okay, after some of the installs, I'm doing a restart. There's a little bit of updating that happens here and uh, we'll be good to go. So that's our, our sandbox. So now I could, of course, go in. I could install databases, but that's the basics of setting up a sandbox.